Hello folks, welcome to Late Night Walkie Talkie. Right. I'm going to talk a wee bit more about this Who Edwards scenario. I'm not going to talk about what he's done, per se. Wow, they break lights or something. Anyway. Yeah. I am shocked to the core that he's been distributing images. That's what we can see. And uh, anybody legal minded out there knows cat one, two and three are pretty serious. <laughs> They're extremely serious. He was up in front of magistrates. I think that's what they call it, magistrates. And uh, the full case will start in September. People have been deliberating what's going to be the outcome, what's the penalty. Now, he's got 37 on these brackets and others on other brackets. If things are going right, and the judge can understand the seriousness of any category he should go to do some jail time straight and simple and even the seagulls are agreeing with me hear him noisy bastards but anyway yeah and it's coming apparent that the BBC are holding a lot of dirty secrets, a lot of they know who's, and that is wrong. It makes us sickened as a general public to pay our what, 169 pound TV license. It certainly makes me sick and repulsed. Um, when it comes to when it comes to Whenever I get a house of my own, I'll be very, very, very edgy about getting a license, if I even bother. Uh, it's absolutely abhorrent. It's blood curdling, you know. Uh, the first we got known was he'd shared pictures with a fellow guy and his missus was sending him off to the Priory and the history from that was he'd been in mental health schools before I don't think he was actually going in to receive treatment per se I think he was just going in there to sit on a luxury bed and watch the telly uh, I don't think anything particular had changed since his last diagnosis of depression and you know like depression itself excuse me for uh, insider knowledge right but I was actually in a hospital myself with a very serious mental health issue right and to actually get even considered for an admission you have to be in an exceedingly poor way an absolutely diabolically bad way and you have got to be showing a risk to yourself right and a continued risk to yourself and it, you've got to have uh, let's say for instance uh, you, you know like engage with interventions the uh, local mental health team provide and uh, not having any benefit whatsoever that's the kind of stuff that uh, gets an admission in NHS Scotland territory, right? And yeah, hearing h him using the Priory in such a way is absolutely grotesque. Well, the Priory, of course, is a uh, private mental health uh, stuff, and put it that way. The waiting queue to get in prior, especially to help with uh, 
symptoms arising from autism is humongous. Right. There's like a private place not that far from where I stay and the, the queue can easily be two years. Right. And then, you know, if, if you're talking about acute admission wards, AWs, right? Some beds do become free on a daily basis, but, you know, people could be waiting an easy week to actually uh, be assigned a bed, and then, it doesn't just come with a bed, you know, when people get admitted, uh, they get lined up with a, a consultant psychiatrist and two nurses known as an associate nurse and a, a normal nurse. Right? It's not called a normal nurse, but you know what I mean, you know, just a general nurse and an associate nurse that takes to do with your health care, right? Um, and admission to one of these acute wards costs a thousand pound just to get your name put on paper and you through the door. Uh, I think what happened with Mr Edwards was an absolute sincere waste of money. Um, I don't think they would have been finding anything particularly much different to the last psychiatrist. Uh, it seems very very likely that his uh, his wife just phoned up the doctor and got him shipped into a priory to uh, hide from some of the, the heat. And that's fucking terrible because, as as you have heard, it's very difficult to get a mental health bed for someone who's generally suffering, you know. And that's why, especially at A&E, they try and trick you out of uh, wanting help. It's called psychological welfare. Right, I seen it when I was uh, needing help, and they tried to say I was sleep deprived, not mentally unwell. But anyway, yeah, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, I just hope the judge doesn't even throw down something known as a compulsory treatment order, which is a, a, a stay at a mental health hospital under section. Because there's nothing really wrong with him. He's, he's just a fucking horrible, horny, slimy cunt. Uh, and yeah, it, it just it, people like him make uh, the wait for uh, an acute bed that bit longer. And as I say, you know, the nurses and uh, try and trick you out of it. You know, it's not like back in the day where, you know, you could turn up at the doctor and you're talking shite to him and he immediately phones for the nearest uh, ambulance to take you to the nearest psych hospital. But, uh, yeah, generally put, I'm going to keep my eyes on this case. Uh, I'm going to keep eyes on the case, see what the penalty is. I think, if anything, it should be literally a jail term and maybe whilst he's in there he gets a ruddy good hiding for what he's done because people like him obviously make the world a lot less safe and when people don't feel safe they kick up then that's why we have riots and everything else um it's just it's wow but uh, the uh, court case is September, so it's about six weeks or so to get uh, everything assembled. I really do think there's nothing that can be done apart from a jail term for him. He's, he's evil. You, you, you can see it in the eyes. You just need to type in Hugh Edwards, H-U-W Edwards, boom. And that's, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's getting a little bit late. I need to get on my bike and I'll catch you all later.